We'd say that this is uncharted territory for distributor Disney, but the company did previously give us Der Führer's face. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons why critics are divided on Jojo Rabbit. For this list, we're looking at why Taika Waititi's 2019 black comedy has proven so polarizing for critics. Just to clarify, the critical reception thus far has been mostly positive, and even Watch Mojo gave the film a rave review following its TIFF premiere. Nevertheless, we can definitely see why a movie like this wouldn't win audiences over everywhere. Hey, Jojo, my old friend. Hi, Adolf. Number 10, the controversial premise. I don't think I can do this. Was? Of course you can. Simply by reading its synopsis, you can tell why Jojo Rabbit has stirred up so much controversy. In the midst of World War II, a young German boy named Jojo dreams of becoming a Nazi. Upon learning that his mother has been harboring a Jewish girl in the attic, though, Jojo begins to reevaluate his outlook on life. If I tell on you, you'll be in big trouble. Throughout this coming-of-age journey, our titular character is guided by his imaginary friend, who just so happens to be a flamboyantly incompetent Adolf Hitler. As inventive as the premise is, it was guaranteed to ignite passionate feelings. Critics are unsurprisingly split as to whether the film's premise is inspired or irresponsible. I wish more of our young boys had your blind fanaticism. <laughs> Number 9. How it stacks up to other satires. In this world there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Jojo Rabbit isn't the first film to satirize Hitler or Nazis. 1942's To Be or Not To Be was criticized upon release for its farcical spin of Nazi-occupied Poland, but today is viewed as a comedy classic. You know, you're quite famous in London, Colonel. They call you Concentration Camp Earhart. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, we do the concentrating and the Poles do the camping. <laughs> <laughs> While Hitler technically isn't the protagonist in The Great Dictator, it's obvious who Charlie Chaplin was parodying. Arguably the most famous send-up of Nazi Germany is Mel Brooks' The Producers, in which two con men put on an intentionally horrible musical entitled Springtime for Hitler. It's practically a love letter to Hitler. This won't run a week. A week? Kidding? This play has got to close on page four. Some critics are ready to place Jojo Rabbit alongside these revolutionary respected comedies. Others, however, would claim that the film has more in common with the British sitcom Heil Honey, I'm Home, which was so misguided and tasteless that it only lasted one episode. Oh, tonight you will make a schnitzel. What a joke. <laughs> you must be real mad at me, honey. I'm a very, very bad Hitler. <laughs> Number 8. What's going on in the real world right now? He's Marshal Jojo. You're a top man. Prepare to leave the house. Although World War II is in the past, the same unfortunately cannot be said about bigotry. Nowhere was this more apparent than at the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, which attracted several hate groups, including neo Nazis. Sheesh, that was intense. Since prejudice and discrimination remain prevalent in today's world, it's obvious why various critics would object to a film that makes light of Nazi Germany. Nevertheless, satire can reflect modern times, as well as history, in ways that straightforward drama can't. Some might argue that now isn't the right time for a Nazi satire, but others would debate that society needs a movie like Jojo Rabbit now more than ever. You're not a Nazi, Jojo. You're a 10-year-old kid who likes dressing up in a funny uniform and wants to be part of a club. Number 7. The Humor Are you ready for the best weekend ever? Yes, I am! <laughs> Your enjoyment of Jojo Rabbit will hinder on how hard you laugh. Or, of course, if you laugh. The film didn't tickle Roger Friedman's funny bone, who wrote in his Showbiz 411 review, Jojo Rabbit is actually borderline anti-Semitic, offensive on many levels, and not even funny. Sam Adams of Slate couldn't have disagreed more, proclaiming, for Jojo Rabbit, comedy isn't a means to minimize but to analyze, to pry at the way hateful ideologies can be embraced as a comfort and how beneath their promise to explain how the world really works is an understanding no more sophisticated than a child's. Kids, it's time to burn some books! Yeah! 
Since humor is subjective, we guess there isn't always going to be a clear line between what's offensively funny and what's just plain offensive. Oh god. Number six, Jewish jokes. Did you know Jews can read each other's minds? But how would you know if you saw one? They could look just like us. The target of Taika Waititi's satire is clearly the Nazis. However, the director, who's of Jewish and Maori heritage, also pokes fun at Judaism. Hi. World of Reels Jordan Rumi was horrified by the audience's reception at the screening he attended, writing, You have no idea how it is to be surrounded by thousands of people laughing at jokes specifically darted at Jews. That being said, Rumi seemed to be in the minority of a group that found the film hilarious. As with Borat and South Park, many would argue that the humor in Jojo Rabbit isn't intended to mock the Jewish faith, but to criticize how ignorant anti-Semites are. You know what I am? Say it. A Jew. Gesundheit. Number five, the life is beautiful comparison. Right. Critics have stacked Jojo Rabbit up against numerous other films, but Life is Beautiful seems to be the one that's invited the most comparisons. This 1997 Italian dramedy also presented World War II through a lighthearted lens, centering on a Jewish man who uses humor and imagination to shield his son from the horrors of the Holocaust. While the film won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film and even got nominated for Best Picture, there were those who found the movie's comedic tone inappropriate. Over two decades later, people continue to debate if the movie is a life-affirming fable or a dated misfire. It's actually eerie how much these two films have in common, especially since both won TIFF's People's Choice Award. They'll never win. That is the strongest thing in the world. Number four. Is it shocking enough? When I was your age, I had an imaginary friend. Got me in so much trouble. Even before the first trailer dropped, Jojo Rabbit was being built up as one of 2019's most controversial movies. Weirdly enough, though, some critics have expressed disappointment that the film isn't more shocking. While audiences have arguably gotten more sensitive with time, there are still patrons who crave comedy that pushes the envelope to its limits. Kids, it's time to burn some books! Yeah! Brian Telerico of the Chicago Sun-Times felt Jojo Rabbit played it too safe, writing, The final scenes of Jojo Rabbit are too easy for a film that needs to be dangerous and daring. Even if the film doesn't go all out with its edgy concept, seeing Taika Waititi dressed as Adolf Hitler will be more than enough to make a few jaws drop. What am I going to do? No idea. <gasps> Got it! I will negotiate! Burn down the house and blame Winston Churchill. Or negotiate. Number three, its depiction of Nazis. Uh, Hitler. The playlist's Charles Bramesco took issue with the film's humanization of anti-Semites, writing, Waititi concedes that a good percentage of Nazis really do hold hate in their heart, but maintains that at least some of them aren't beyond reach. You two seem to be getting on well. She doesn't seem like a bad person. Given how much pain and suffering the Nazis caused, many audiences will understandably struggle with this message. However, if Ron Jones proved anything with his third wave social experiment in 1967, it's that even ordinary people can get swept up in the dangerous ideals of fascism. Likewise, Jojo Rabbit poses a challenging question. If we're not willing to acknowledge the bad and the good in people, how can we ever rid ourselves of prejudice? Nothing makes sense anymore. Yeah, I know it's definitely not a good time to be a Nazi. Number two, it's message. Your mother took me in. She's kind. She treats me like a person. Whatever your thoughts on Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi clearly wanted to spread an anti-hate message. Waititi also claims that he started writing the screenplay before Nazis regained relevance in the media. There's little doubt that Waititi's intent was noble. Whether or not the final product successfully gets his message across is where critics are split. A.A. Dowd of the A.V. Club felt that making fun of Nazi Germany had been done before, thus taking away from the movie's broader anti-hate theme. Peter Howell begged to differ in his Toronto Star review, writing, Taika Waititi knocks it out of Der Park with the meaningful lunacy of his anti-hate satire, which is equal parts Mel Brooks, Wes Anderson, and Waititi's own whimsical brilliance. You're growing up too fast. Ten-year-olds shouldn't be celebrating war and talking politics. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 
Number one, it's depiction of Hitler. What's wrong, little man? They call me a scared rabbit. Okay, let's address the giant rabbit in the room. Taika Waititi spends most of his screen time prancing around in a Nazi uniform and toothbrush mustache. Without a doubt, Waititi didn't set out to deliver a serious or dignified portrayal of Hitler. Rather, Waititi aspired to make the Führer look as goofy and idiotic as possible. Does painting Hitler as a wacky, even likable buffoon desensitize us to the atrocities he committed, though? Some may say yes, while others may argue that it leaves audiences more informed and open-minded. At the end of the day, everyone is going to have a different opinion of Jojo Rabbit. Let them say whatever they want. People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, look at that psycho. He's going to get us all killed. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.